Can some philosophers have called consciousness the oddest thing that we know of in the universe? Why is consciousness so baffling? Well, uh, for one thing, the membership program is not solved. When I say the membership program, it asks what part of the universe is conscious. For example, we know that humans are conscious, but can we say dogs are conscious? How about cats? How about computers? Yeah. How about robots? <laughs> or even a thermometer? <laughs> you know, unless we can define what part of the universe are conscious, yeah, yeah. Uh, we cannot start really, you know, uh, start our scientific investigation. Mm. And, you know, there's many different opinions, like uh, some people think that even water molecules are conscious. <laughs> some people say that only humans are conscious because we have linguistic abilities. Some people claim that unless we have language capacities, we cannot be conscious. Right. So there are so many different opinions as to this membership problem of consciousness. So I think that's one of the reasons why consciousness is so baffling. So we have two, really, aspects of the unusualness of consciousness. One is the membership problem, yeah. where you don't know what things should be classified as conscious. Right. And the other are explanations of conscious, which are vastly different from consciousness doesn't even exist, so we don't even have to explain it, mm -hmm. to a very hardcore reductive materialism, uh, to dualistic ideas, to panpsychic ideas, to idealism where consciousness is the only reality, everything yeah. else is, yeah. is derivative. Exactly. I mean, so you have two different ways in which consciousness is as if completely not understood. Yes, exactly. And uh, I think these two aspects are actually related. Mm. Because uh, you have a whole spectrum of conscious experience, actually. From the very rudimentary sense of where I am and here I am, and to the very sophisticated linguistic expressions like in the Shakespeare play. Yeah. So when we say consciousness, uh, we mean different things uh, mm. from people to people. Right. So for example, when somebody says even a thermometer can be conscious, what he or she means is completely different from somebody says, uh, you know, uh, who says, uh, we need linguistic ability to be conscious. Right. So, you know. So from a thermometer being conscious to Shakespeare, to, yeah, being, Shakespeare being conscious. conscious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> are, are two expressions of conscious that people have really given. So, and this is very much related to the membership program, isn't uh, it? Because uh, some people say water molecules can be conscious, but what he says, can be is, should be very different from uh, for somebody who says that only linguistic beings can be conscious. Right, right, right. So that's one of the most uh, fundamental obstacles when we consider the nature of consciousness. Okay, you've talked about qualia fundamentalism. All right. What, what, what does that mean? Well, uh, it is a realization that when you consider human mental activities, qualia are the really basic building blocks. For example, we are in an art gallery, and we, we can approach a work of art from many perspectives, like uh, you can uh, ask what in what kind of context this work was uh, produced, oh. what was the artist like, and what was the influences, and so on. But at the end of the day, artworks are here and now. Mm -hmm. you know, the value of an artwork is what we experience in front of the artwork. Yes. And what we experience in front of the artwork is composed of qualia. So qualia fundamentalism, fundamentalism is a realization that when we think of the world as we experience it, it is actually basically constructed of uh, various bits of qualia. And we do uh, have other aspects like context, history, you know, uh, social values and so on. But these are actually distractors this, this can be distracting from us from the real issue, which is what kind of qualia we are experiencing mm. in front of an artwork, for example. Right. Now, qualia, the, the inner experience of what things feel like, yeah. the smell of garlic or the, the sight of a beautiful painting, um, that, that feels so real to us. Yeah. But some philosophers and, and neuroscientists would say that's kind of an illusion that the brain produces. 
uh, that sort of makes sense out of a world that has very different uh, systems that give us information, and we sort of artificially do this. And what we think is a real problem is really a, a trick of the brain, and 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 is therefore unsoluble, but it's not really a problem to solve. You know, it's really, really interesting when people say Korea are not serious problems because uh, they are illusions. Right. But they are illusions, right? <laughs> so what is the ontological status of, of an illusion? <laughs> you know, I, I don't believe that you can just, you know, wave away something by saying that is illusion. You know, okay, Korea might be illusions, but then what gives rise to these illusions? What are the mechanisms behind it? And, you know, why are we so uh, fascinated by these illusions? There are so many, you know, uh, things to be explained, even after you admit that Korea are illusions. If you do. If you do. If you do. You still, if you do. You if still if you have do. a problem. Yeah. Right. So I'm fine with these people who say Korea are illusions. It's just a rephrasing of the problem. And, and, and shifting where the emphasis, you still have that, that hard problem of, of the explanatory gap of how, how can anything in the physical world explain something that is not expressed in physical terms because you can't put physical parameters, uh, extension, depth, weight, time on, on qualia. Exactly. So, you know, people say love is an illusion, <laughs> money is an illusion, but uh, saying that love and money are illusion, that does not necessarily mean that they are not uh, important to us. They are important to us, right? So I think uh, trying to kind of dissolve the problem of qualia by saying they are illusions does not really solve the problem at the end of the day. So. I have a huge problem with these people who say Korea are not important because they are illusions. Yeah. Korea are important because they are illusions. <laughs>